Um, I've been going to camp since 2008, so a long time. Um, when I was six months old, I was diagnosed with a rare brain tumor called an optic nerve glioma, which it disappeared after a couple years of treatment, but it left me legally blind with hydrocephalus and really short. I'm too short to stay on. <laughs> People are going to treat me differently because I'm visually impaired and really short and um, So, yeah, so, but camp has been there for me through everything, and I've had some of the best days in my life at camp. Uh, for instance, one day, we, my cabin, we were like little kids, and we decided to go steal a fork from the dining hall. And we ended up going out there, and Moose Slips was there with like cookies and bubbles, and we ended up playing the piano for like two hours. It was the best day of my life. And I got to play in front of the cabin during our cabin skit, and then in front of the whole camp. And every year since then, I've been playing at the very end of each slideshow. It's incredible. Um, and so, I, I realized, you know, like the reason why people were clapping in the audience and cheering and crying because it was emotional was not because I was a survivor or because I was blind or any of that. It was because I could play. And so, camp.
Of course, we only had about one centimeter of hair to work with, so that was difficult. But by the time they were done spray painting stars of all different colors on her head, her smile, her smile was one of the biggest I've ever seen in my entire life. Since we've been in the same cabin for all of our years except one, we got to do many activities together, such as beach combing. We sat together on an upturned kayak on the waterfront eating apples, just laughing and talking about teenage girl things, as most kids my age do. In that moment, everything drifted, like we were on cloud nine. There are no sick kids at camp. There are only warriors. And man, in that moment, cancer was shaking in its boots. And in that moment, sitting by the ocean eating apples, me and Olivia were far above cancer, and we would never look back down. Another memory I would love to share is one of my first moments my sister and I shared a connection. My first year attending camp, me and my sister both decided to attend Memory Circle together, a safe place to remember people who have lost in a brave battle and to share how we feel. Still being a talkative eight-year-old, I gathered up the courage to speak, little to know that it would lead to tears coming from both mine and Annie's eyes. I spoke of how jealous I was of Annie, the beautiful china angels in her room, the big bed and huge computer. And yet, what I found out she was going through, I would honestly give her all of my toys. Maybe not the stuffed animals. <laughs> it was generous at the time, OK? <laughs> this was the first time I had truly expressed my admiration towards my sister. From that moment on, older, incredibly annoying sister or not. <laughs> Let me be honest, jeez. <laughs> I vowed to never see my sister as unworthy of her big fluffy bed or a huge computer monitor or even the gorgeous angel statuettes. Camp is incredible, beyond words. It would be impossible for me to describe how incredible camp is to all of you sitting here, even on this really cool stage with this cool microphone. <laughs> and it wouldn't be possible without people like you. So from the very, very bottom of our hearts, we would like to thank you so, so much. It means so much to us that you come here. So, with that, give till it hurts! <laughs> thank you, I thank you, Amy and Molly, for taking a little bow here, taking a little bow.